And that, even that, the idea of that pisses me off, like you're gonna allow me to get married. So let's talk about gay marriage. How has the conversation around gay marriage helped or hurt gay relationships? I think it's done both actually. I think it's actually put us in a position to where now we're forced to think about do we want to get married or not because it is an option and hopefully in the future it will be a widespread option but now that there is the option to do it I mean we have to kind of go back in our heads and think okay is this something that ultimately I want for my life or am I happy just staying solo so um, I think it's definitely helped and hurt in both ways I think the bigger question is now with marriage comes the whole divorce factor. Right. You know, right. if you get married, it doesn't work out, you get divorced, so are you gonna keep doing it? Like, it's just natural relationship marriage type thinking that's now available to gay men and gay women, so. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in, in a sense, some of that's been available anyway. I mean, you know, couples that have gotten together, they bought a house together, there's no marriage contract of any kind, and when they split, they still have to go through, mm -hmm. how do we divide? our assets, how do we move on? And I, I've met, uh, you know, I, I know and have worked with women who are, I mean, they're, they're trying to date and they're in the throes of trying to have this non-divorce divorce that's much more difficult because it's not so clean cut. Yeah. And marriage maybe makes that process a little cleaner, but I think it does throw us into the place of having to have conversations that maybe a lot of women or men don't want to have. Like, I'm not into getting married, I never was into getting married, and now because it's legal where I live, now I have to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so it can really shift the balance or the course of a relationship in ways that, in states where it's not legal, it's pretty straightforward, you know, we can't. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna live together and come up with our own idea about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as two people who were married, mm -hmm. I go, what, what the fuck are you guys thinking? Why do you want to do this? Well, um, hey, shake my sake. hand. I think the same. I, I 23 years of marriage. I'm like, I've been there, done that. I'm not in a rush to do it again. But it's not. I'm not opposed to it because I think there's a beautiful piece for those who haven't been through that experience mm -hmm. to really validate, okay, this is what it means to really step up to the plate and be in a committed relationship. But I don't need a goddamn piece of paper to tell me that. I mean, my partner and I have been together for 12 years, and I know we're here because we want to be here. However, to flip the coin, I want to be recognized for what I'm putting into this relationship on a federal basis. Yeah. And when I have to fight for stuff that everybody else can go get, I mean, if Mary and I, God forbid, wanted to go get married right now. We could get married. Yeah, we'd probably be okay together. <laughs> we could be okay, yeah. We could walk out this door right now and go do this, and we would have every right. And every benefit. And every benefit. And to me, that's just wrong. What I'm finding that's really interesting in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, in my community, is that I feel like people aren't talking about it as much as I would think that they would be talking about it. Yeah. And it's almost like I feel like they're afraid to talk about it because we were fooled, sort of fooled once into thinking that this is going to happen. We're really going to finally get this, and then all of a sudden it gets pulled away from us. And it's almost like people aren't willing to even think about it so much. They don't want to entertain the idea because they're worried about the disappointment is what I'm thinking. It doesn't come up a lot in conversation. Like, I think it's a combination yeah. of the two conversations you've had. One is that the gay, the gay marriage being on the table forces gay couples to have the conversation of, do we want to be bonded in this legally committed way? Which for some people is a no, right? right. So that's okay, yeah, yeah. right? And then I think there's also this piece of like, I desperately want this. I was raised in this culture where marriage is valued just about above anything, mm -hmm. right? And so now I don't want to be disappointed. Yes. It's complicated. Yes. I think one of the things we've had in our community is this sort of opportunity to craft our own kind of relationship and our own kinds of commitments and rushing towards marriage. I think there's a, there's for, for many, um, equality organizations, that's sort of the big stepping stone into the rest of the benefits and the rights that we need to have as people. That if we're eligible, we're allowed, and that, even that, the idea of that pisses me off, like you're gonna allow me to get married? Yeah. Gee, thanks. thanks, how's it working for you? <laughs> um, it's, like, it's not like it's my human right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it, it is, you know, a word we used earlier, it humanizes us to a lot of people who otherwise have marginalized who the LGBT community is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
-hmm. So the question of gay marriage is obviously quite complicated, and it sounds like for our culture it's incredibly necessary. Whether we are fully into exploring it yet remains to be seen. We need to consider gay divorce, we need to consider all of the financial implications at the national level, mm -hmm. and we need to keep talking about this. And it sounds like the media helps, but it sounds like we need as leaders in the field to really be helping too.